Hey Mini Enthusiasts, how are you doing? Welcome back, it's part 24 of the Project Kit Build. Brief glimpse there of Buddy the Elf, uh, just being reversed out of the workshop to make some room. So Buddy the Elf actually has been sold to one of the channel subscribers, uh, Steve, so I hope you're getting on well with it. So uh, all the excitement of the paintwork, and we're back to reality now and it's just a case of putting the car back together now so it all seems fairly straightforward from here on in so at the moment obviously uh, we are just taking the little trolley the mark made for moving kit around the workshop because we're going to put the front and rear subframes in it get it up on all four wheels and the reason we're doing that is because the body is being sent away to be wet flatted and machine polished. So uh, the paint works pretty good on it, but Mark wants it perfect. He doesn't quite trust himself to machine polish it because he's never done it before. So he wants to make sure he gets the best finish possible. So it's going away to a professional detailer to be done. So we're just trying to get it on all four wheels at the moment. There's a few things we have to do first. So before the rear subframe goes in, the front to rear brake pipe has to go on. Um, you can probably do it with a subframe in, but it's a little bit awkward, but it's nice and easy to do it now. So we're using Cunifer copper piping, or it's uh, copper and nickel actually. It's not pure copper, because if it was pure copper, copper work hardens and it can crack especially if it's vibrating so we're using Cunifer and Mark's working on the other side of the car fitting the fuel pipe so there's a fuel pipe return pipe and vent pipe so that's actually causing us a bit of a headache because it's a 1990 shell I think it is which Mark bought uh, but we're putting, uh, putting an SPI engine in it purely just for reliability and uh, just because they, you know, you've not got to worry about chokes and things like that. So because it's for Mark's wife's car, we want it to be as simple to operate and, and use and drivable as possible. So it's getting an SPI engine in it. So of course we've got to fit the fuel pipes on a, a carburetor shell. So there's just some of the stand points on the floor pan are not there and there's no hole in the boot for those fuel pipes to go through so Mark was uh, making them. So a couple of extra guys in at the moment, these are the detailers. Uh, the detailing company that Mark's getting to do the work are very very good actually, very professional, uh, they generally work on things like Ferraris and Aston Martins brand new cars um, so I won't mention the name of the company yet just in case they don't want to be mentioned and we'll see how good the job is first <laughs> um, but yeah when the car detailer turns up in a Porsche 911 um, they must be good at something or charging too much money one or the other uh, but they were going around here with a paint thickness tool or gauge quite sure how it works it must have like a I don't know sonar paint depth meter on it measuring the thickness of the paint just obviously making sure there's enough paint on it so when they come to wet flat it and compound it they're not going to go through the paint so as you know uh, we know that already so plenty of base coat and uh, four layers five layers in total of lacquer so there's plenty to work with so as you can see we've got that lovely subframe up on panels at the back, oh crash, oh no, <laughs> um, kind of caught us by surprise that uh, luckily didn't cause any damage to it but that was just the wind catching the uh, welding shield at the back there. But yeah, lovely candy apple subframe there, uh, that just needs rebuilding, putting back together, you'd have seen me 
just spraying wax inside the cavities at the back there where the radius arm brackets go just to make sure it doesn't corrode in the future and if you've been watching the work I've been doing on PL I used a similar glue for holding the rubbers which sit on the top of the subframe and actually sit between the subframe and the body I think they're just there to stop the boot floor vibrating on the subframe I know on lots of minis they've fallen off or people don't fit them back on but we decided to fit them on anyway uh, flexible brake parts going on they're colour coded to the car so they're Goodrich hoses in red and if you can see the suspension cones in the middle there or suspension donuts uh, they're slightly bigger than normal so they're the molten smooth ride suspension donuts now some, I know some of you watching this might go oh, you know they're not as good for handling as red spot or yellow spot but this car like I've mentioned many times is for Mark's wife it's all about making it a nice car to drive, uh, smooth, comfortable, refined if you can ever get refined in a Mini, but we'll try our best. But the Bolt and Smooth Ride kit really does make it a nice drive, about as good as you can get really without without converting to maybe hydroelastic suspension. Coilovers are generally not that great, um, they tend to be more harsh and the spring replacements for rubber cones are very harsh they're not progressive they don't have a progressive spring rate so i'm just making up the copper brake pipes for the back of the subframe there just before the subframe goes in so they're not very heavy it's nice to put them in now uh, just because you're not crawling underneath when it comes to doing that and in true brake pipe fashion the first time I made that pipe I forgot to put the end on I didn't slow that down on the video but I did <laughs> so that was me just pointing it out there doesn't matter how many times you make brake pipes you can guarantee the nicest brake pipe you'll ever make will be the one you forget to put the end on so I guess this is a bit of a treat for subscribers or watchers this weekend because this will be the second kit update going out that's because all the work's done on PA now so I'm sure I'll find some more bits to do and I've got some bits to do on uh, on Vinny, I've just not got around to starting it yet, so for the time being, it's a bumper weekend, double update on kit. And I'm off down to Mark's tomorrow to continue to work on kit. The car's not there though, so the car is at the detailers, so we'll be putting the engine together tomorrow, I think, and just cleaning up some bits, getting the rest of it prepped and ready to rebuild once we get the shell back. Do you see that Gorilla Glue? Uh, it is like expanded foam, you can see it there where it's all oozed out the side. So I just go round it with a knife there just to cut the excess off. But it does stick things very, very well. where I actually find an issue on the back of the car there so I thought I'd just go around and check the threads in the radius arm bracket holes before we put the subframe on and I found on that side which where is that is that near side or off side that is the near side rear the captive bolt in the subframe was missing it wasn't threaded or anything which is completely missing so obviously someone's 
undone that or done it up before and it's broken away. So good to find that out now before we put the subframe in the shell actually, so it was worthwhile doing that. It's a bit of a, bit of a pain to weld because it's all powder coated uh, inside that cavity at the back there as well, so just to go around there with a little die grinder and just clean it up. So I've put a nut bolt through that for the moment. It's a stainless steel nut and we just weld that in place so it's not going to move. So uh, yeah, I thought I'd done with the welder, but there's always little bits of bobs you might need it for. Just to be sure on all the all the nuts, I just run in a tap through it, through all of the bolt, all of the uh, nuts, all the bolt holes, just to make sure because where it's been powder coated, the powder coat gets inside the threads as well. So just make sure they're all clear. Cavity wax in there. I should be sponsored by Waxor, shouldn't I? And then I fitted the brackets on before we actually put the subframes in, and that's purely just to make sure that they, they fit on and they line up nicely. So that side, I could get the bolt in, but Mark managed to. Putting the subframe in, quite an easy job if there's two of you, and uh, we had Lucy on hand as well just in case it all went wrong. It's always nice to have a second pair of hands, but a third pair of hands even better, isn't it? So considering what we've done to this shell, this is kind of the top moment of truth, isn't it? Because that's had a heel board on the back of it, inner and outer seals, floor pans, the whole lot. So uh, it's at uh, this stage when it doesn't all line up, um, yeah, it's uh, pretty frustrating, but I'm glad to say it did all line up. accessories for mounting the subframe, that's the subframe mount themselves, or subframe mounts themselves which are in anodized aluminium, red of course to match the rest of the car. I think that's a really important bit with a black car like this, you've really got to concentrate on the the colour details in the car, otherwise it look, just looks plain and boring. So hopefully we'll get it right. And I think I might have mentioned it previously, but the subframe's just being rubber mounted on the back. It's not pulley bushes. They're not performance bushes or power flex bushes. They are just standard rubber bushes. And again, just because it's more about comfort than performance. We've got a pair of rear radius arms on the floor there. Again, they've just been cleaned up, shot blasted, powder coated, reamed and new radius arm pins and bushes fitted to them. 
so they're pretty much ends move. cables and quadrants going on. Always find it a challenge to remember which way the quadrants go round because they're longer on one side than the other but uh, luckily I've got plenty of other minis to go and look at and just compare it with. It's always nice when you're reassembling new bits and clean bits like this. I always found on when I was rebuilding or putting on old sub old radius arms into a greasy old subframe where it's had loads of grease splattered and pumped into it over the years, getting those uh, inner and outer rubber seals to stay in place. Because they always pop out when you put the radius arm in. Uh, yeah, it can be a pain because you don't know until it's all back together. Then you've got to take it apart again to either uncrimp the seal or make sure it's fitted on all right. So just fitting a cone in the back there. It's got adjustable high lows on it. I think the Bolt and Smooth Ride kit comes from Mini Sport. I think they have kind of exclusive rights on it. But the actual adjustable cone, you need to position it so you can get to the grease nipple. Rear brakes are completely new, so that's just the kit you buy from Mini Sport. Comes already built up. Really easy to assemble. If you watch my PL video, you'd have seen I completely overhauled that myself. as we go back together all the nuts bolts and fasteners are all in stainless steel as well now stainless steel is good because it doesn't corrode but stainless steel itself is actually harder than normal sort of steel mold steel bolts it's not actually as good as a nut bolt stainless steel or I don't think it is anyway tend to find that it's too stiff um, and there's no give in the nuts and bolts. They tend to vibrate loose as well. So I remember a friend telling me he'd fitted stainless steel nuts and bolts on his Harley Davidson. It was a regular job going round them all and uh, retightening them all back up again. Where you, didn't, you didn't get that with mild steel just because it has a bit of stretch. I suppose, I don't know what you call it, a bit of elasticity or something like that, but when you when you tighten it up a mild steel bolt, it stays tight. Stainless steel one doesn't do, so that's why generally they need to either have a lock washer on them or their nylock nuts. Talking up the rear hub there, obviously that's got new bearings, which we've done previously. And make sure you get the correct torque on them. Mini fins on the rear drums, just to save a bit of weight really. That's all what you call unsprung weight as well, so mini fins are quite a lot lighter than rear drums, the sort of steel rear drums, and obviously they perform a bit better. We found that with them, same as Dave Jaguar I think, there's casting marks on the inside need to go and clean them off because lock on the drum on this side it actually hit the brake shoe so when we spun up the drum it sounded horrible so it was a little bit of a race on between me and Mark not that Mark's competitive, neither am I, but I always win. Um, 
I did record some footage. I don't know what happened to it, but we always have a little bit of a contest on brake pipe making as well. Who can make the best brake pipe? Again, I think it's always me, but I might be biased. But Mark's getting better at it anyway. But certainly, rebuilding the radius arm kicked his ass. <laughs> but <laughs> to be fair, I've got plenty of experience. I think I've just done PL as well, so I've had a refresher as well. So that's the back end almost done. Uh, I'll run the battery cable after this. Just put that back in place. Adjusted up the brakes. And in the next update actually, so that'll be coming pretty soon because I've already got the footage for it. We obviously build up the front subframe, then it's on all four wheels and it goes off for wet flatting. I cannot wait to see what it looks like once it's all been wet flatted and polished on. I think it's going to look absolutely awesome. So as always guys and girls, I know we get the odd female subscriber. Should be some more. I need to do more for the ladies. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I uh, really appreciate it. Give it a thumbs up please if you enjoyed it and I look forward to catching up with you next time. Have a great week. Thank you.